Hey, what is up guys? Klaus Nix here and welcome to the KX Podcast. This is number five and today we're going to be talking about the truth of the fitness industry or at least my perspective on what the truth is. So we're going to talk about the industry as a whole and industry by definition is the production of goods and or related services within an economy. So when I was planning out what I was going to talk about in this podcast, I was trying to figure out like how I was going to break it down, and I figured I'd just break it down by its definition. So this video will be talking about goods, and we'll be talking about services, and then all the other subcategories under those. So let's start with talking about the goods of the fitness industry, the things you walk into a store and you can buy, the, the commercials you see on TV, the ads you see on the internet, YouTube videos, things that you can spend your money on. Okay, that you, you buy an object or there's there's a transaction and you receive something that's not a service. So that's what's a good what a good is. So I'm gonna start with the biggest market that the, the fitness industry has, and I think that it's supplements. They definitely make the most money off of supplements because there are full stores dedicated to it, you know, your your health aisles and grocery stores are full of these big tubs with flashy labels promising you the world. I'm not so much talking about vitamins and minerals, well those you know, those containers can be misleading and flashy too. And you can find a lot of vitamins and minerals and stuff in these uh, supplement stores. I'm more so talking about the things like protein and creatine and pre-workout and, and, and all of these other. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even give you a proper list because it's, I haven't been to a supplement store in a long time for a particular reason. Now, if you guys haven't seen my other YouTube series called Lies of the Fitness Industry, I would go check that out because I'm going to cover a lot of the points that I have in those videos. Those videos have all been broken down to about like 10 minute long videos on each subject. So if you're looking for a particular subject, I would advise you to go check those out. So what supplements are, are there to supplement what you are lacking, right? So it's not called an addition. It's called a supplement. So you, you take a supplement if you're not getting enough of something in your diet. You're lacking protein, you're lacking carbohydrates, you're lacking fats. You know, you can supplement that with something else. Or you're taking something instead of something else. So that means, like, you shouldn't be replacing, like, food, like edibles with supplements. It's just kind of to give you a bit of a boost, to give, to help you out, to, to aid you in your, in your fitness journey. Now, if you're doing a lot of working out and you, like, you, you're struggling with muscle recovery because muscle recovery is really important and you're not getting enough protein and it can be hard to get a lot of protein in the diet and because you know protein is expensive and you cooking meat takes time and skill so a lot of people you know instead of coming home from the gym and, and cooking up some chicken it's easier to have a protein shake and I agree I have protein shakes every day I that's the one supplement that I buy because I know I'm not getting enough protein in my diet at least to, to match the needs that I, I put upon my body with the way that I train so I think protein is definitely one of the few exceptions to, to you know, supplements being a scheme or a scam or, or whatever. Um, because I know personally I need more protein and I know most people need more protein. People who are active or, and inactive need more protein. Now there's different diets where you are low carb or you're high fat or you're high this or low this. And you, you switch from what you're normally used to and you're not used to like... Um, providing yourself with the macronutrients that your diet requests. So like people who are on keto, you know, taking spoonfuls of, uh, of oils or like olive oil or, or adding it to their coffee or stuff like that, you know, because they're trying to meet the needs. Like that is good. Okay. That is using supplements in the way that they're supposed to be used. Like you're, you're trying to help yourself out because you're almost there, but you just can't quite make it. Or you're caring about the way that your body's recovering or your joints or like, you know, taking omegas because your, your joints are sore because you're doing a lot of squatting. Like, that's okay. The, the things that I have a problem with are the supplements that make promises for you. Fat-burning supplements, okay? Do not buy fat-burning supplements. You are wasting your money. What's going to help you a lot more than going on a fat loss supplement is to just go for a walk, okay? It's going to help you psychologically, physically. It's going to help you in all these different dimensions of health. It's going to be good for your heart. You're going to lose fat because you're moving, you're burning calories, your heart's pumping, your blood's flowing. It's, it's all around a lot better for you to just go for a walk than to spend your entire paycheck on fat loss supplements so you can just swallow a pill for a, a result that's not even guaranteed. But the fat loss ones really get to me because 
as someone who who's, who's studied this field and learned about the body and, and how it loses weight and how it gains weight, you, you could not be wasting your money more than buying pills that promise you things. And, and there are other examples too, just like th things that promise you muscle gains or promise you instant energy or promise you, you know, like that you're, you're going to achieve all of your dreams by swallowing one pill. Those are the things, if, if it sounds too good to be true, it, it is. Okay, there's, there's no bottle out there that can do what, that, that can replace what it means to go for a walk. There's nothing that can replace going to the gym or, or doing push-ups on your floor or something like that, you know? So if it, if it sounds too good to be true, like the labels, like people are paid to market these labels, make them look good, make them look flashy, make them like suck you into it. Like they're going to, there's different, they market to differently to different kinds of people. So if it's a young man who's trying to get built, he's trying to get big muscles, they're going to try and advertise, you know, freak beast pre-workout. So you want, it, it draws you in, makes you think, oh, I want to be like that. So they're, they're playing into the desires of what, you know, someone vulnerable and, and learning and inexperienced. And that, that, you know, the same thing goes for women or older men. Or, you know, it really doesn't matter. There's a market for everybody. Okay, so you didn't just find the perfect product that will help you. Someone is being paid to market to you. So just use caution. Because not all supplements are bad. A lot of them are good. And there are conditions, of course, you know, exceptions can be made. Um, I, I can't provide an example, but like where when you would use these, these flashy pill bottles. But I'm sure there are exceptions out there and products that are really good and they do as they're promised. I'm just speaking on behalf of my experiences and my knowledge, okay? So everything that I talk about is biased to what I think. Just because I'm speaking this does not make it the truth. It makes it what I think. So uh, it's, it's good to educate yourself before you go and buy something. And don't rely on the, the salesperson for your knowledge and your information. Because I've gone into these stores and I've asked people questions about, you know, what does this do? Oh, how does this work? And they have enough training to market something, sell it, get it off the shelf. Anything past that, you're, you're going to need to find a passionate employee. Otherwise, they're not, they're A, not going to know, or B, they're just, they're, they're selling you a product. They've memorized all the labels, they've memorized the benefits, the pros, the cons, and they're going to shoot them at you. And you're not going to get a full in-depth understanding because they're trying to get something off a shelf because that's their job, right? So I would go on the internet, do a bit of research, or pull it up on your phone, read some, uh, I guess, read some reviews, or anyone who's broken down the product, or just, like, if you really need it, right? Like, if you really need what you're going to buy. I only buy protein because I know that's the only supplement I need. My diet is, is pretty sound otherwise. I get enough vitamins and minerals and other things. I don't usually need to take any kind of vitamins or minerals. And, and I'm aware of that. I've educated myself. So I would encourage you to educate yourself because that's your only protection. Like you have to care enough about your body. And in re I mean, really, you're going to have to care enough about your, your money and your wallet <laughs> because they might not even be bad for you. These supplements, they just might not help you. You might just literally be wasting your money, swallowing pills and making shakes that aren't going to help you. So educate yourself. All right. So that's a big subject, moving on. They're not all going to be this long. That's just an area that I think people need to know about. So next let's talk about um, lifting accessories, okay? Like, I'm not, like, these are things that you see wrapped around people's wrists, elbows, knees, you know, stuff like that, um, shoes, all lifting gear. You see professionals using it or in a Nike or Adidas commercial or, or something like that. Different types of lifting equipment. So... The one thing you should know about these lifting accessories, it's kind of the same thing as, as the supplements. You, they're there to help you. They're not there to do the work for you, okay? If you put on wrist wraps, it's not going to give you a better bench. It's going to protect your wrists, and it, like to a degree. It's going to help stabilize your wrists, but it's not going to give you a better bench. I use lifting wraps around my wrists because... I don't know how to put it other than the fact that I think that I have bad just genetics in my wrists. They're just... They get very tired easily, and they're weak, and I, I've hurt them both in football, and I've already had surgery on one, so I wear wrist wraps, okay? And that's to protect and stabilize my wrist. I don't wear them because they look cool or because they bring a certain vibe to the gym. Okay, If, if that's kind of what you're going for, then you're wasting your money, and, 
I mean, you're just kind of a <laughs> you're kind of a goof, honestly. Like, what are you doing? Uh, I mean, things like knee wraps or sleeves, like for compression. Like, if you're doing heavy squats, you know, you're doing powerlifting. Like, those can definitely be good. But like, I just wouldn't recommend ever using any kind of accessory unless you need it, unless you've had a problem or like you're going for a PR and you're really trying to protect yourself because that's all these things that you put around your joints are okay they're there to help keep you safe help to help protect you help you achieve your lift with the strength that you already have right um so, i mean another thing is like not so much to protect your wrists but like things that actually help you do the exercise not just like aid your your body like actually physically help you like um lifting wraps okay they they look like like long straps of like fabric or leather or something you wrap it around your wrist and then it kind of goes around the bar of the dumbbell or the barbell or the pull-up bar and they give you better grip I, I advocate against those because you need to develop your grip before you put those on because they're going to help you I use them once because I hurt my finger playing football I messed up my right hand and I couldn't grip anything because my, my muscles were tight and screwed up and they couldn't grip and it, everything hurt. I used a, a lifting wrap then because I physically couldn't grab. Okay, in, in that sense, it was good because I couldn't do it on my own. And I used it until I got my grip strength back. I was able to grip things without things hurting and then I ditched it. And I haven't used it since. I haven't used it in like a year. It's because it was only there to help serve that purpose. That's the same as lifting belts, right? And I just made a video about this, it's on my channel right now, about lifting belts. But you should only be using a lifting belt, and in my opinion, there are people who disagree with me, um, if you're trying to protect yourself because you're going for a really heavy lift, you're lifting something out of your usual range, you're, you're going for a deadlift PR, or a squat PR, or something, like. but you should be developing your core strength and stability before you put on a belt. Okay, you shouldn't even be using a belt for like, your first two years of lifting like your body needs to develop core strength you need to learn how to engage your abs i hurt my back so bad it messed me up for years it still has messed me up because i didn't know how to stabilize my core i wasn't wearing a belt but i just i didn't know how to stabilize my core and i hurt my back and and you know that was a powerful life lesson for me and since then i learned how to develop my core and i did all of that before i put on a belt okay it, it's you need to learn how to engage your abs if i'm saying engage your abs and you don't know what I'm talking about, you should not be wearing a lifting belt. Okay, it's, it's, the you need to engage your core because it surrounds your spine, which connects to your hips. It's a very critical area of your body. A lot can go wrong, but it's also a very powerful place. It's a powerful source of strength and power for you. So you need to develop that before you put on uh, any kind of lifting belt. So, Belt straps, they can help you, but I mean, you should develop the skills like grip and, co and uh, core, core strength before you put on a, a lifting wrap or a belt. Uh, let's move on to like lifting shoes, okay? I think lifting shoes are a cool idea um, because some people, well, there's a few different reasons for wearing lifting shoes. Some people like just being barefoot in the gym and most gyms don't allow that, so they get like, like, shoes that have like toes like, like they, they look like they look like your feet except they're just covered in like some kind of fabric like toe socks it, it's hard to describe i should have thought this through but um they basically look like feet they're just but they're, they're shoes and some people just like to feel close to the ground you know it's very human to to lift weights and just your bare feet it feels very natural and i agree with that like that i do like that feeling but gyms don't allow that like 90 percent of gyms don't allow that so I mean, I think that's, I think that's fine, you know, you just, it's just a preference thing, and, you know, people, some people like to deadlift in socks or whatever, and, like, gym, gym staff, and I've been a staff at two different gyms, and we're, you know, we're told, like, oh, you should wear shoes because, you know, it's protecting your feet, but, I mean, if you're deadlifting, like, 400 pounds, and you drop that, and somehow it lands on your foot, whether you're barefoot or wearing a, a, <laughs> a pair of runners is not going to help you, okay, so it's not really... A protection case so i don't think you should be wearing shoes for the protection it just should be a preference thing and like depending on what kind of exercise you're doing unless you're wearing steel toe boots in the gym 
right? It's not really a matter of protection. Um, like, I mean, if you're doing a lot of heavy lifting, like deadlifting or squatting, the flatter the shoes are, the better, because you don't want anything that has too much padding or anything too soft where, like, you're standing. And, like, if you're going for a run and there's that constant pounding on the ground, there's that constant, your feet are hitting the pavement or the treadmill, and you kind of need that cushion, you know, just for comfort and so you don't mess up your ankles, like, then that's really good, you know, to have those big cushion padded runners. But if you're lifting weights, it's going to feel like you're, you're floating on water trying to pick up heavy weights and stay stable. So flat shoes are better. Lifting shoes are very expensive, so that so you can probably just find a pair of flat shoes. That's just what I do. But um, lifting shoes, you can spend money and get shoes that are designed for lifting weights that are flat, or they just make you f like feel more barefooted. You know, I think those are fine. But I don't think you need them. Most people get by; they don't lift heavy enough that they need to worry about what kind of shoes they're wearing. But it's, it's a factor, and I I respect that. And, I mean, if you were doing a, a ladder drill, if you're, like, an athlete and you're trying to improve your footwork, you wouldn't want to wear flat shoes, okay? Those would not help you because they don't absorb the impact of the ground like a pair of runners would or a pair of cleats would. So it depends on what you're doing. If you're training athletically or you're training for weights or you're training just to be a good runner or, you know, it really depends what you're doing. So you should be utilizing an outfit that suits the style of training that you're doing. So do I have any problems with any kind of shoes? No, I think that it's it's smart. And once you get to a place when you understand, you know, you, you get a little more advanced in the, the style of training you're doing, then yeah, cool, for sure, try it out. I don't think you need it. I think that they're expensive and not always necessary, but I don't think they're bad. So moving on, I guess gym outfits, there's not a lot to, to say. I mean, if you want to get good athletic outfits... You know, if you want to get Nike or Under Armour or anything like that, and you go to those stores, those clothes are expensive, man. But, I mean, they are good quality, usually. You spend a lot of money to get a good brand name fitness outfit. It's usually going to last you. Like, I've been, I have some Under Armour clothing and Nike clothing that I've been wearing since high school. I've been wearing for, like, seven years. And they're just starting to get worn out. Like, it's usually good stuff. But do you need it to, to be an athlete, to go to the gym? No. You can wear whatever you want as long as it's not hindering your movement. Okay, if you can do a squat in it, if you can do yoga in it, if you can do an overhead press in it, you know, you have to think about your joint mobility first and then what the logo is on the front of your shirt second. So really movement is everything. So whatever you're wearing, it shouldn't hinder your movement. Um, do I think that it's a scam? Like, like buying expensive Nike clothing, like, whatever, it, it's your preference, you're gonna buy what you can afford, and I like to wear Under Armour, because in high school, uh, when I was in high school, getting into football, Under Armour had the slogan of, like, this is our house, protect the house, it's very football, like, pretending you're at, protecting your end zone, and I really, um, attributed that as part of my being, protect the house, protect the house, I was a defensive lineman, and that I kind of that kind of became a part of my character, you know, just a very um, defensive and protective person. So I kind of have always liked Under Armour because it makes me think of high school. It makes me think of all these positive character values. So I will spend more to wear something that makes me feel those things. And Nike, you know, Nike was um, Nike's the Greek goddess of victory. So that's that's where that comes from. So I always, you know, I'm a I minored in classics. And I love Greek mythology, and I love just the the powerful message that Nike delivers with victory. And that's why I wear Nike. I don't just wear it because I know it's a good brand name. I have these feelings associated with it. And I have, you know, there's, you could get the most powerful attachment from Costco socks, and that, that can be your thing, you know, so it, it really doesn't matter. It's not a, a scheme, it's just your preference. If you're willing to pay more, it doesn't make you a better athlete. But if it helps you psychologically, sure, why not? You know, you, I mean, you got to recognize that you're, you're playing into your placebo. And that's not always a bad thing. That can be smart. That's playing to your body. If it's going to give you an edge, then yeah, always go for that edge. Moving on from clothing. Um, let's talk about, <laughs> let's touch on shaker cups for a second here. Because, boy, the amount of different kinds of shaker cups there are. Shaker cups are good. Um, 
<laughs> they can also be very expensive and they do the same thing that a cup with a lid can do so don't spend a lot of money on them I have a shaker cup that that I use for just water okay this is my water bottle it's a black shaker cup it's got Darth Vader's mask on it okay and I love it and I bring it with me everywhere and I only use it for water I don't put other shakes in it because when you start putting protein shakes if you've ever done this, you, you've learned that it, it stains the container pretty fast, or that's all you can taste in it. It kind of, it's kind of like a coffee mug, right? After you've had coffee in it a few times, all you can smell in that thing is coffee. Even when it's fresh out of the dishwasher, you can smell coffee out of it. So that's the same thing with protein shakes. So in that sense, you sometimes, like, you forget to wash it for two days, and the smell is so unbearable in those things, you have to throw them out. So you can start spending a lot of money very quickly on on shaker cups uh, and uh, I don't know I like I don't I don't have any kind of advice on that on that front I just try and reuse the same ones as long as I can because they're very expensive I have a couple that I use for pre-workout uh, like just a separate those little cups with lids I love those things more than I love shaker cups because they're just cups they're just efficient uh, but if you're gonna buy a shaker cup okay buy a good one don't buy one from the dollar store you can get a nice shaker cup for $2, it's probably a piece of garbage. Don't waste your money, because you're going to go end up spending more money on more. And they probably will leak on your first use. So spend like 10 bucks and get a good shaker cup. And then use it as long as you can. And try and resist the all the marketing out there. And shaker cups are becoming more like, like almost like pop pop culture. Like they're... You know, you've seen Star Wars shaker cups like the one I have. You've seen Marvel shaker cups. They see so much, so many like Batman shaker cups and Hulk shaker cups, and like as they as fitness, which is always going to be relevant, becomes more mainstream, and these shaker cups become more mainstream. It's only going to get harder and harder and harder to resist the marketing. Okay, so shaker cups. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and be like, "Oh, shaker cups are bad." No, they're they're great. Um, just be careful because they're expensive and you can spend a lot of money on them. When I, I don't even make protein shakes in them anymore. I use like a blender because I can just rewash it and, and I have one for breakfast every day. It's like a bullet kind of thing and I put protein in it and milk and I blend it together, drink it, wash it, do it again the next day. So shaker cups, you I mean you've always got the little metal balls or the whatever it is now, whatever's popular. It could be a plastic stick with metal coils. I don't know. But uh, just be, be cautious with, with those. Um, next up, after shaker cups. Oh, I had a couple other topics I wanted to touch on, but I don't know how to transition into them. Okay, so we got more goods from the fitness industry. This is going to be a whole video on its own, and I'm actually planning to do a YouTube series on this. So if you're listening to this podcast, you're, you're catching, uh, catching the wave before it crashes here. I want to make a series on fitness gadgets, gimmicks, you know, like tricks, things you see on TV, things you see on the internet, things that promise you abs, like those belts that you strap around you or those things where you do squats onto a stick or like I could, I could go forever talking about all these ads and they are, some of them, they're pretty funny, like watching people vibrate in a chair because the belt is shaking their torso up and then they show like in the next scene, a model who's been like lifting weights for like ten years, and he's on steroids, and he just looks jacked, and they just and, and they they fool you into thinking that that product is going to give you that. <laughs> oh, I just I have to laugh because I can't even take these things seriously anymore after learning about the body and, and getting my kin degree. I'm going to do a series on it, so I'm not going to talk about it too much, but. Don't just don't buy any. If you see anything on TV, you see anything, just don't. Just save your money, okay? Just go do some go go for a run, do some push-ups, do some squats, some lunges, do some functional calisthenics, learn to do the basics in the gym. Don't buy any garbage you see online. Okay, don't buy sh don't buy shake weight, okay? Don't buy whatever newest angle of treadmill there is out there with steps that go in four hundred different directions and you can do it while you're sitting on the couch, okay? Like, just don't even waste your time. I'm not even going to go into it because those things are scams and they're based on very loose evidence that they don't show you in the commercials. But they have proof, but it's very loose and they're, 
their facts are very loose and they're very surface level and they don't really work. That being said, let's move into steroids um, and models. I'm going to leave this subject for my lives of the fitness industry because I don't really need to reinvent the wheel here. I already covered this in length. So I'll link that series at the end of this podcast. So you can skip to that one or you can listen to the podcast if you're enjoying it. I hope you are. Uh, I, uh, I really enjoy talking about this subject. So just to quickly touch on steroids, okay, to each their own, honestly. Like, I'm not going to be a, a judge. I'm not going to say what's right and what's wrong. I mean, to each their own, as long as you're not taking them and saying you're not taking them, because that's dangerous, and that's that's you're fooling people. You're fooling yourself. And, like, that's what you see with a lot of lifters on YouTube and stuff saying that they're natural athletes. And, then you know, they fill the younger generation with hopes and dreams that they could never possibly fulfill. So if you're going to be on steroids, just be upfront about it. Be op- be open about it. And if someone asks you, tell the truth. <laughs> like, honestly, it's... You see, you see this so much with models and, you know, men and women. Men, specifically, just get so screwed over by these models with steroids, telling them that this is what a man is and this is what a man should look like. And they have a low body fat, and they don't actually show the amount of time that person spent in the gym while taking these steroids and, the, you know, how much it helps. It's just, it's just dishonest. So if you're going to take steroids, just say that you're on steroids. Don't claim to be natural because then you're psychologically messing with people especially if you're the best looking guy in the gym or the most jacked like if you're kind of ashamed to admit you're on steroids then you should probably reevaluate why you're on steroids if you're trying to surpass the natural uh, limit the limits people as to how jacked they can get like that's one thing but if you're just doing it to get jacked fast and you're scared to talk about it if you're scared to talk about it you shouldn't be doing it right and it creates these false standards for society uh, you know, like in the media and commercials and the bus and the paper ads on your phone, stuff like that. And on YouTube, man, I spent so much time on YouTube. I, I've learned how to filter out. I won't even watch somebody if I think they're on steroids and they claim to be natural. Don't even waste my time with that crap. That's that's just my opinion. And it just creates these expectations for men and women. You know, just be honest about it. And like, it's it made men as a whole just i feel like it makes people self-conscious because they think that they're supposed to look a certain way and they can't possibly achieve it even if they've been in the gym for years they won't achieve what someone can do on steroids in half the amount of time and you know it's these these false standards it's just it's it's ridiculous so i would recommend you going and watching my video that i, I touched on this I could, I could go on for a long time going into the specific details so i'll leave that for that so those are the goods that I wanted to talk about. And the most important thing, and the theme of this video, is just to like know what you're looking for and what to look out for. Okay, so I've given you guys some tips on like what you should be spending your money on, like goods, and what you should be avoiding, and like whose advice you should be taking. Um, let's get into services, okay? So I've just got a few points here. Uh, the first one is personal training. Again, I have videos on this, but I'm going to touch on it. So there are a lot of really good personal trainers out there. I've seen them. They're honest, and they know what they're talking about, and they genuinely care about people, and they have a passion for health and fitness. And those are the kind of people that you want, the people you can trust. There are personal trainers out there that are also there to make a buck, and they're also there to string you along and give you workouts that aren't going to give you good progress. And they're, you know, if someone's really desperate to get into shape, they're going to spend any amount of money and they're going to keep doing it until they look good. And if a personal trainer is smart and scheming, he's going to give them inefficient workouts that aren't the best suited for their needs and string them along and keep taking their money from them and not give them um, the workouts like that they need. So if you find yourself in a situation like that, I would be asking a personal trainer questions. Why are we doing this? What is this helping me develop? You know, how is this helping me achieve my goals? Don't let them take advantage of you. Again, that's just a, not all personal trainers, just some of them. It's just something you want to look out for. And then will make you do ridiculous exercises like 
Things that, I mean, personal trainers should be starting you off with the basics, nothing crazy. So if something feels really just, just weird, just weird, you know, it's, and that's not just you being nervous of being at the gym, you can tell it's just weird. It might actually just be weird. So just something to be aware of. Um, next up is, is gyms. So ultimately you want to go to a gym that best suits your needs because there are a lot of different unique people in this world all training differently. You could have a gym with a hundred people in it and every single person there could be training for a different goal. They could be training for a different sport and that, you know, all different types of exercise come with different styles of training, how aggressive you are, how loud you are, how in the zone you have to be, stuff like that. So if you want to avoid problems in your gyms, find a gym that suits your needs. Um, otherwise, you're going to be in a gym and you're going to find yourself getting mad at people. And as a gym staff, I see this happen and I've been mad at people and I've been mad at myself for being mad at people because I get sucked into this drama too. So don't go to a gym that is like, you, you know, you might have to drive to get to this gym because gyms now... They, they want to make money off of a certain kind of people, or they want certain kinds of people in the gym. And a lot of people, a lot of gyms, are marketing to what the, the biggest majority of people are. People who are self-conscious, overweight, trying to get back in gym. They just want to run on a treadmill for an hour. They want to do some of the basics on like fitness machines. They don't want to be distracted by loud big guys with dumbbells. So a lot of gyms are marketing to that kind of people, because they are in the majority. So... People are looked down on if they lift heavy or drop their dumbbells or they're loud or they do loud controlled breathing, which is really smart. Um, and that's that sucks for for people who live five minutes from their gym and they're shunned because they know how to train or they're training intensely. You know, next time you get mad at some big dude who's loud and he's dropping his weights, take a second to think, hmm, why is this guy the best looking guy in the gym? Why is this guy the biggest, strongest guy in the gym? You know, maybe it's because of the way that he trains. Maybe it's because of his intensity. So just, just something to think about before you get mad at somebody in the gym. And just find a gym that suits your needs. Don't go to Planet Fitness if you're going for deadlifting, okay? That's just, uh, <laughs> it just, once you learn kind of the themes of these gyms, it's, it's best. Because sometimes gyms will offer you things that aren't quite the reality. Like the memberships or... The services that they offer and it's not always reality and the quality of the services might not be very good either what promises like oh if you get a gym membership for this much time you will get this or you'll get this and a lot of the personal trainers that work in these gyms have a different level of education as other trainers so like i know some gyms they just want to pump trainers out because if you want to get hired at the gym they want personal trainers so they put you through some two-day program that makes you a personal trainer and there's absolutely no way that uh, a weekend learning how to be a personal trainer equates to years in a university okay there's no way that you can learn at the same amount of depth you know so if you're getting a personal trainer at a gym it, i mean if you're curious it might be smart to ask them why they got certified and how that certification holds up because a lot of at least it's it's this way in canada in my city, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, there's so many different certification programs out there, it is crazy. And a lot of these gyms don't recognize other certifications. The certifications that I have are, you know, if I go to one gym, they're accepted. If I go to another gym, they're not accepted. They accept this other certification. So it's just, it's totally a gong show. And that's another area of the fitness industry too. I mean, these all these certification programs. You could spend a lot of money on this and that. And, oh, this is recognized this year. Oh, that certification is not recognized anymore. You need to get this one. Oh, you need to update your certification. A lot of the stuff is just money making, right? It's just continuing to profit off of people. So, yeah, I guess my point is that if you're going to be getting a personal trainer and you're, you're learning about the services a gym offers before you get a membership... You should just maybe do some research into certifications or what kind of trainer you want. Because it doesn't make you a bad person to turn down a personal trainer because they're not who you want, right? You should, you should care because you're paying for their services. You should care. So my point here isn't to scare you out of getting a personal trainer. I'm just saying that you should educate yourself and figure out what you want. And then find a trainer that lines up with your goals and find a gym that lines up with your goals. It's not actually that hard or scary. You just... 
you have to inform yourself because you know the world's not going to inform you all the time and sometimes gyms aren't honest about their services or what the personal trainers are like so you got to educate yourself and on that subject let's talk about like some of the services that personal trainers offer so like workout plans or diet plans I made a video on both of those on my Lies of the Fitness Industry series, and they both are the same, so I can talk about them both at the same time. So if you're paying for a workout plan or a diet plan, just make sure it's personalized for you. Make sure that the trainer has asked you a lot of different questions, they've considered your lifestyle, they know how many hours you're spending sleeping, they know if you're snacking, they know if how, how often you can be in the gym. They've asked you what your work style is like, what you know, your family. They've they've really gotten into your life and figured you out and are trying to make a diet plan and a workout plan that works for you. When you can eat it, how often you can cook, you know, realistically, a good plan for you. So if you're gonna buy one online, like a celebrity tra trainer or your favorite YouTube fitness athlete is selling diet plans or workout plans, like you pay for like a PDF, I've bought those, okay. And, and I learned very quickly that they're not personal. They're not personal. They're, they're just the same workout that everyone buys. And then, you know, workouts, as a personal trainer, I know that you can... Everyone is very different. Everyone is very unique. They all have different needs. And it's different depending on what kind of body type you have, right? I talked about that in my last podcast. So if you're going to buy a pre-made workout plan, know that it's not personalized for you. You can still get benefits and rewards and gains from it. Um, it just know that it's it, it's not going to be tweaked exactly to what level you may be at or what skills you might have or you might not know how to do the exercises. And diet plans, I mean, you got to watch out for people saying they're going to make you a diet plan and then they give you the same diet plan they gave to the last person because it worked for them. Or it worked for the person who gave you the diet plan. And maybe it's just their diet plan, they just gave it to you. And I mean, there's a lot of good people that give you really good good diet plans and they really care i know di registered dietitians i have friends who are registered dietitians and they're and they really care and there's a lot of good people out there just be careful that you don't end up with a sucker and if something's not working for you make sure you talk about it don't just spend a lot of money and waste a lot of time and eat a lot of food and you realize your progress isn't going anywhere and you're honestly working really hard make sure that you have that conversation with your trainer and you know just Ask lots of questions, okay? The best way to catch a phone is to ask them a lot of questions about why they're doing what they're doing. Because if they're educated, they should have an answer for you. There has to be that personalized factor, okay? And otherwise, don't spend money on a plan. I sell workout plans on my website. And they are, they are workout plans pre-made, so I've made them. But they're for sp specific types of people. So one type of workout can work for a lot of people, even if it's not personalized to them. Because I am selling my programs to body types, okay? So, like, I'm a defensive lineman. I'm a six foot one, 200, 230 pounds at the moment. Um, I, if, let's say I'm making a diet plan for other defensive linemen, okay? They're all different shapes and sizes, but they're all in the same, they all have the same body type, and they're all doing the same type of training. In that sense, the same workout might work for a lot of people. You know, like team workouts. Those might work because everyone's working towards the same goal. Everyone wants to be explosive and have fast feet, things like that. They do work. So it doesn't have to be totally personalized in that sense. But, I mean, if, if you're just an individual, then, and, and you don't really know what you're buying, like, I wouldn't buy one of my plans unless you see one that appeals to you and your goals. So I have some that are just about, you know, for people who are overweight and obese. That's a body type. That's a specific type of people. So anyone can benefit if, from if you're in that range, or if you're, I have one about getting building lean muscle and and uh, having a low body fat. You know, specific type of people. So I am marketing specific types of people, and that's that's okay. I mean, <laughs> I think it is, unless I'm being a huge hypocrite. I think that that's okay, because I I'm being honest about it, and I'm not trying to sell it to everybody. I just like, hey, you know, if you're an athlete. And you want to get faster and stronger, I can help you do that with, you know, this program or my services. Because I have experience in that field. Anyway, my point on plans, workout plans, diet plans, make sure that they are personalized to you. And to wrap up this podcast, I'm going to give you my best piece of advice that I can offer. And that is that whatever information you get, do your best to make sure that you're getting true, real, authentic information. The thing about the human body is that 
we are always developing our understanding of the human body, the, you know, the field of science, biology, where we learn more about the body every year, things we, we didn't know before. And, you know, there are studies and stuff and, and facts, like facts, proven facts that change over time. We used to think bodies did this. They responded to this. This is the best way to lose weight. Ten years later, we laugh when we see that because we know it's really this. And ten years ahead of us, we might laugh at what we thought was factual now. Things can change all the time. And there's a lot of um, conflicting information. Like, like the body responds best to this. But there's also a fact that says it responds best to this. There's a lot of information that conflicts out there. And there's a lot of information that ends up overlapping. And the more that I learn about the body... The, the less that I, I, I realize I know because there's just so much information out there. And there's, you know, the, the un our understanding of the human body is evolving and developing over time at such a rate that sometimes it's hard to feel confident in the things you know. So if you're looking for information, don't buy into the first article you read online, okay? It might be someone trying to sell you something at the end of the article. Don't buy into the first YouTube video you watch. Don't buy into, like, buy into the first thing you meet someone like at your job and they tell you they're a personal trainer and they give you really good advice just because they're your friend and they give you really good advice doesn't mean that it's the right advice talk to a few more personal trainers do some research because there's so much information out there that can conflict or overlap you want to kind of f try and find the truth in all of that whatever truth that is you know the best honest authentic real information out there so in these times of confusion I try and remind myself of the things that I know are true and that won't change. And um, that, that's just something that I, I'm challenging myself to. And especially, and I'm trying to field my way, or I'm trying to find my way in this field. And I keep getting hit with information this way and that way and this way and that way. It's just crazy. Okay, this whole industry can be nuts. And you realize there's a lot of people that don't really know what they're talking about. But they're really good salesmen. Or they're really good at marketing. So... The theme of this video is to know what to look for by educating yourself and also educate yourself on what to look out for because I like I love the like I love the field of health and fitness. There are so many great people. There are so many healthy, passionate people that just care. They just care a lot. They open gyms, they have classes, they offer personal training services. They just care so much about the people. And there's a lot of people out there that are the opposite. And they're just trying to make money. They're trying to fool you okay so i'm not saying the fitness industry is just corrupt as a whole i just mean that there's like anything in any industry there's a good side and there's a bad side there's there's two sides of the same coin and you need them you need, you need both sides of them to, to complete it right for the i don't know what i'm trying to say um i guess there there with all the good that there is in the world there's going to be the same amount of bad that much i know to be true because we live in a balanced universe so be don't just like know what to look for know what to look out for like have your goals in mind but also know what you have to avoid okay that's just the best way to maneuver your way through this field so thank you guys so much for watching this podcast or listening to this podcast i hope you enjoyed it please feel free to give me a bit of feedback in the comment section and uh if, if you agree or disagree and uh, let me know if you have any ideas for a future podcast. I've got a list that I'm going through, but I love to hear any other ideas. And I'm open to talking about other subjects and doing some research on it. Thank you guys so much for listening. Klaus next out.